In this video, we're going to look at the new Cartoon Animator 5.2 update and specifically the Motion Pilot tool. I'm going to run you through a demonstration that you can follow along with to help you familiarize yourself with this new animation tool. So let's get started. Right, so here we are in Cartoon Animator 5.2. Just keep in mind that uh, the Motion Pilot tool is a new feature for 5.2, so if you haven't upgraded, you won't see the tool, uh, which is this arrow pointer tool down here, the Motion Pilot tool. But before we get into that, I just want to draw your attention to the free pack that comes in your content manager with this new update. Uh, if you haven't already, I would strongly advise you to go into the projects section of this pack we'll go down into the projects we see a whole bunch of demonstration projects but in particular down here we've got try yourself projects and i would recommend uh, after watching this demonstration perhaps going in and opening up these demo projects and following the instructions provided uh, inside the project just to experiment more with uh, seeing how the motion pilot function works and being able to adjust the settings on projects that are already created ready for you to actually experiment with so just be aware that that's there and it's a good way to familiarize yourself with the new tool now also with this release was the motion path tools which you can see up here and here but for this particular video we're not going to focus on that we're going to focus entirely on the motion pilot tool so what i've got here on the stage is my avatar character it's a g3 character uh, with sprite hands and a g3 360 head and before we get into the tool we're just going to remind ourselves uh, of the x y and z or z coordinates just to because they play quite a big part in the use of this tool so to do that we're going to go into the 3d camera and just remember that the x coordinate this arrow here is what moves the character across the screen you can remember that that's the x coordinate because x is across so that's how you remember x the y coordinate is the up and down so i just remember that by y up and down and then of course we've got the z or z coordinate which moves your prop or character further away or closer to the camera but you need to understand those three coordinates when you're dealing with the motion pilot tool and when you're in stage mode like this obviously x is moving across if we hold down the shift key we can limit it to the x uh, y up and down holding down shift limit that to y and z is this little arrow icon at the bottom moving it further and closer to the camera we're going to reset that back to the zero point first thing we're going to do is with the character selected uh, you, if you're going to follow along just put any g3 character on the stage doesn't matter and have it selected click on the motion pilot tool and this is the window that comes up essentially what motion pilot is is a way to actually animate your characters and props through puppetry uh, basically by moving the mouse pointer around uh, if you're familiar with facial puppetry and you've used that a lot it's very similar to that but now we're going into the whole body and being able to do the same thing with props and stuff as well. So with this demo, I'm not going to take you through everything in great detail and we're not going to look at the timeline too much. This is just a basic run through of the motion pilot editor window, just so you can get a feel for it and to give you a starting point to uh, learn this thing in more detail yourself. So, and just keep in mind this pretty much works the same way as with the the face puppet editor in that you can preview what you're going to do down the bottom here and then when you're ready to record you just position the playhead in the timeline where you want to start recording from and hit the record button so uh, you should be pretty familiar with that process but we're just going to start with the transform tools and go with the default settings just to see what they do so i haven't touched anything this is the default and we're just going to hit the preview button and then hit the space button and 
let's see what happens. You can see I'm moving my mouse around, characters moving around. I can go any direction, except I can't go bring him closer to or further away from the camera. It's just X and Y I can move. You can see the spring bones in my character's hair are reacting to all those movements. Hit spacebar to stop that. So starting from the top, what have we got? Uh, we've got the move box ticked here. So obviously that's what we were doing. Uh, we've got the X axis activated. It's got a one in the box there and the Y axis is activated with a one. But the Z axis is on zero and that's why uh, we couldn't move this closer to or further away from the camera. So firstly, I'm going to restrict the y-axis because this is a character who wouldn't be flying around like that. Put it on zero and then we'll do preview, press the space bar, and now I can only move the character left and right. Can't go up and down at all because I've completely disabled the y-axis. Now we'll have a look at the z-axis and I'm going to put it on the extreme other end just so that you can see this effect properly. And you'll see on the side of this there's a little drop down box that gives you which axis or which axis you want to affect with the z-axis when it's moved. We're going to go with the default, the y-axis, which means when I move the mouse up or down that movement will affect how near or far away this character is from the camera. So go preview and try this out. Left and right, exactly the same, but now watch when I go up, you see the character is getting further away. And when I go down, the character gets close together and it stops getting closer because I've gone off the edge of the screen. But stop that preview and we change this to X and then preview, space, you see now when I go left and right, the character gets closer and further away. So that gives you some idea of how that works. I'm going to change this back to Y. Obviously these negative functions are for going in the opposite direction. So if I did negative X just quickly. You'll see the character is getting smaller in the opposite direction to what it was before. So I'll put that back to Y. We've got this space box here, which can be either world or local. Uh, I think that means sort of in relation to everything on the stage or in relation to the character itself. I'm not quite sure. It does seem to have a little bit of an effect. So we go local and then preview. It gets based on character's actual root point. So you can see everything's sort of based on in relation to maybe where it is in relation to the root point when it's on local. Whereas if we have it on the world, the preview, uh, it's more based maybe where it is in relation to the stage perhaps. Hard to tell, but just experiment with that. And I think these next two boxes are pretty self-explanatory. If we wanted to add rotation into that, turn that on and press preview. Now you see when I move around, it can rotate as well. And obviously you can adjust the strength of that. And again, which axis uh, you want the mouse movement to affect. So at the moment it's on X, if I change that to Y, and then do preview, uh, it only rotates when I do the mouse going up and down, not left and right. As you can see, this is why we had to sort of reinforce the idea of the X, Y, and Z axis, or Z axis, because a lot of these movements depend on you understanding those concepts. And again, scale, pretty self-explanatory. Press that when I go preview. Now it's not coming closer to, actually, that's going to be a combination. We'll turn Z off so that it's just scale that's affecting this movement. And we'll preview. So that's scaling now. It's not actually using the Z axis. You can tell it's scaling because character's feet, you'll notice, are staying perfectly in line with this grid line. And it's just getting bigger and smaller. I was to turn that off and then use bring the Z axis in and change it to the X axis and then preview. You'll see when it's negative X that it looks the same. You'll see now that's getting further away and you can tell because the feet aren't staying in line with that grid line like they were on the scale axis or on the scale settings. That's that. And then we've got this little box down here. I'm just going to reset everything and turn off the Y coordinate. Now this face cursor function is based on the position of the mouse and what it's affecting. If I preview, at the moment it flips when the 
cursor goes past the character. So you'll see if I keep going this way, the character's following it. As soon as I go the other way, it flips. So the character is following the direction of the cursor. Now the opposite of that, and this is more for what you would use for props and things, is the character turns uh, when you move the cursor. So we'll see how that differs. See this character is now, it looks a bit random, but it's actually sort of following where one moving the mouse so that's probably better for props you can adjust the smoothness of that here not going quite as quick perhaps and here you can set the forward angle click on this button you'll get this little compass thing turn up and you can just move this around to whatever angle you want to be the front of the prop it's, uh, it'll follow when the mouse moves, so if I put it on 270, turn this off, and now we preview it. You'll see sort of the front of the character is trying to stay in the same direction as the mouse when I do the mouse movements in the various directions. But you'll need to experiment with that setting. Uh, as I said, it's better for props rather than characters. You probably wouldn't use this turn setting for characters. You'd probably leave that on flip. And we might set the forward angle back to the top, although I don't think it really matters for flip. Uh, it's more important for that. So going into the next section, we'll just make sure that you've got the same settings that I have up here. I'll preview that, and we've got it so that when I move the mouse, only the X and Y is working. I can't go forwards and backwards, and there's no scaling, and the character is flipping when I go side to side. So if you're following along, just make sure you have the same settings as what I'm showing here. So we'll move into the wave feature now, and we'll close transform up. Now I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but basically what it does is when the character in this instance is moving from side to side, it also adds a little bit of automatic up and down wave kind of movement if you think of waves going up and down. So if we just turn move amplitude on and preview, uh, this is probably going to look pretty crazy, but you can see I'm not touching the mouse, the character's just jumping up and down like it's floating up and down in a wave pool. And if I move it left and right, so this is all the wave function does. And just like with the transforms, you've got X, Y, and Z things that you can adjust. You'll notice it was going up and down quite extreme. So that's the Y axis, and you'll see we've got these sliders here that actually split apart. If we bring those closer together by dragging one of them, and then do preview with space. I'm not touching anything, but you'll notice the character is now going up and down a lot less fast and a lot less distance. So there we go. That's what wave does. And all of these have got that same sort of range setting. So we could have it maybe going in and out instead of up and down. So if I preview that with space, See the character, it's almost like they're breathing now, going in and out on the z-axis. That could be a quick way to just having a character that's not doing anything on screen, but you want to give it a bit of life. Maybe you could just have them standing there doing that, just to make it look like they're breathing or moving. Without you doing anything, you're just turning that setting on. I'm not going to go through everything up here. In fact, hit the reset all for that section and rotate amplitude similar sort of thing if i just turn that on press preview you see now it's like a metronome i'm not doing anything that's just the default settings and we can change the angle here maybe we want it to go going 90 let's try it. see what happens if we go to 45 yes we can just do that as well 45 press preview you see it's not going as far and I can have it doing that while I'm still doing my X sort of transform stuff as well. If I wanted to, uh, I could go into transform, turn both of these off and now when I hit the preview here, that's just going from side to side and none of my mouth, mouse movements at all is affecting that in any way. So if you wanted to just have movement in the background that you're not even controlling, you can do that. But Go back and turn my movement and face cursor back on because I'll need those for later. And scale again, exactly what you'd imagine that would that to be. Preview it, don't change any settings whatsoever. 
Now I've got like a heartbeat kind of thing happening. The character's just getting bigger and smaller and I'm not doing anything. If I start moving the mouse around, see the character getting bigger and smaller. So it's not complex, just all different settings depending on what you want to do. Then you've got these sort of caliper type things that you can move in and out. So these ones are moving independently here. I guess those ones do as well. Right, you've got this lock function here, so you can move those independently if you wanted to. Right, we'll turn that one off. And say so we just wanted to do this a little bit of scaling. Preview. There we go. It's not really complex at all to work out. Very easy tool to play around with. Right, and you've got this um, tween setting here that you can modify this with. And I'm guessing it's not unlike transition curves. You've got these little graphs here that sort of give you an indication of what's going to happen. Linear is a very straight tweening, where on the scale amplitude it's just going to go bigger and smaller. Uh, but you can add this random cyclic one or the noise one. Let's try noise and just do preview. And you'll see that's sort of got this really weird stuttering kind of effect. So again, you just need to experiment with these different settings going side to side. So I've still got my transform, don't forget. And you've got these loop durations, which Rotate also had, and Move Amplitude also had. You can adjust, and you've also got this setting here for Use Mouse Movement. So let's see what how that affects it. So if we've got Use Mouse Movement, the effect only happens when I'm moving the mouse. That gives you even more control over how these things are affected. There we go, we'll turn that all off and we'll move into the next setting, which is motion. Now this is where it gets really interesting, if it, have, if it wasn't interesting enough as it is. In here, when we turn this on, you can actually add motion files to your character. So what I'm going to do, if we go into one of the free pack, go into the free resource, animation, animation, 2D motion, and then we'll go. Here we go, we've got this walking loop motion here. We can just click on that, drag it onto the motion pilot thing into the blend motion window, just like so. And now we've got this walk motion in here. So if I don't do anything else and just click preview, you'll see now the character is also using that walk function. But it's sliding around all over the place. So Let's do move in place, this setting here, and you'll see the difference that that makes. So now the character is looping in place. We're probably going a little bit too quick, so we can adjust the speed. Try to go preview. Maybe we're going a bit too slow, so we may need to go up a bit. Preview. Yeah, that's getting a bit better. Up the speed a little bit more, see what that looks like. Still getting a bit of foot slippage there. Speed. That's actually pretty good. Still a little bit of slippage. Try one more. Preview. And I think that's just about right. But being able to do this, you can see how this is going to sort of change your life in terms of animating your characters on the stage. I could record this now, having my character walk into a scene. You could get all this with how you want your character to move in a scene. Then just record it and you would never have to deal with the timeline at all. Just literally puppet everything in your animation. So at the moment, we've got the character flipping whenever I move the mouse, and I believe we can make the character walk backwards. We go back to transform and turn off face cursor. Come back down to this and then do preview. See the character is walking. Now it's not flipping because we've turned off face cursor. You see it's doing a kind of a moonwalk effect going backwards, and you can try to remedy that by using reverse animation here in the motion blend motion track so we've got that click now and we'll go preview so we're walking forward and if we walk back it's a little less moonwalky but that's how you can get easily put in some backward motions it's not too bad maybe we'd want to speed it up a bit or something but Otherwise, that's what you could do. So I'm going to turn reverse animation off and turn face cursor back on. We'll close up transform. 
and use mouse click is pretty much what it says if I preview this now see even though I'm using moving the mouse nothing is happening if I click the mouse you'll see it runs through and starts walking it just clicks to loop or we could do click to play which if I click We'll run through the motion until it gets to the end. Click again. There we go. It runs through the motion until it gets to the end, and then it won't do it again until you click. So there you go. We've been through almost everything now. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at is the flock settings. And before we do that, flock settings are for when you want to animate more than one object at a time. So think of it. If you wanted to do like a swarm of bees or I don't know, maybe a herd of sheep or something and you wanted to have all of those things either moving the same or moving roughly the same but not in sync with each other, that's what the flock settings are for. Uh, I'm going to show you the most basic version of it. I'm not going to get into the real details of it, I'm just going to show you the basics of how it works so that you can experiment with it a bit more. So, I've already done this before, so I've got this character in here as my lead object, but obviously I need more characters on the stage before I can do anything. So, what I'm going to do, get out of this for a moment, and I'm going to create a chorus line of tet avatars. So, Duplicate, and that'll give me character here. Click him again, and duplicate, and move this character over here. Now we're going to select all of these characters. I'm going to multi-select with the control key. This going. So we've got them all selected. Then we're going to open up the motion pilot window again. Now you see this little red marks here showing that this character is the lead character. If you want to change that. You've got this little eyedropper tool here that you can change to any character like so. See the little red lines going over. If you want to select them, you just click on them and that'll change it. But I'm going to leave it on the first guy here. Uh, we've got this follow delay type here. And that's where you determine uh, if the characters all perform the action pretty much at the same time. Uh, like they would in a chorus line in this case. Or if they're going to do these actions at random. And we'll sort of try that out. Uh, we haven't got a delay type, so we're just going to go with what it is. It's going to use this motion in here, but I believe this setting will work with anything and everything that you've set up in all three of these before it. So if we go preview, and you'll see all three are just doing that particular motion side to side. And that's because I've got use mouse click still selected. I don't want that. So we're going to use mouse, mouse movement. Change that. And now when we preview, you will see all of the characters walking together when I'm moving the mouse left and right. So that's what the flock settings do. And let's see if what happens when we go... All right, I think default uniform. That's where you can sort of adjust the... Delay, press space, there you go. So they don't all start at once, they're all moving around. If we stop that and had a delay time of zero or one, I'd imagine that would be pretty much being a lot like having none in that setting is so. You don't want them all to start at the same time. We could perhaps do 20 in there. Go preview. You'll see it'll be a little while before the next one starts. And then if we wanted to do random, leave on these default settings here and go preview. So you can see. The other two tets are doing the same motions that I'm puppeting, but they're just going at random, sort of in relation to what I'm doing. So you can see how you could really perhaps do a crowd scene with this, of people walking along the sidewalk, or something along those lines, perhaps. And I'm going to put that back to none. 
So there is one more setting that we haven't looked at that you probably won't sort of stumble across just experimenting and that's this button down here called the lazy mouse and what this does is determines how responsive the character or prop is to your mouse movements. Uh, at the moment I've got it set to 5 which makes it quite responsive but watch what happens when I set it all the way to 32 and the starting position is based on the object pivot so that's uh, the pivot point for the character or prop that you're using. The viewpoint center is basically like the world axis kind of thing and I'm guessing the blend is just if you've already got a motion that you're recording and you want to blend this movement with that you'd have that ticked etc. But let's preview this and watch closely what happens when I'm moving this. It's on a lazy mouse. You notice the mouse when I move the other way. It doesn't immediately turn. It's keeping going and moving past. That's what this does. If you don't want it to be quite as responsive when you turn, change direction of the mouse, you can also adjust that as well. There you go. Just to show you this last thing, just you've never used the facial puppet tool before uh, to actually record this motion instead of doing preview. Just go record, hit space. Now we've got my tech characters walking along. This is actually being recorded, it's not a preview anymore. And we just hit space to stop. We're done. Close up the motion pilot thing here. Go stop and now hit the play button. You see, I just recorded some animation using the motion pilot tool and it stops there because that's where I stopped recording and if we open up the timeline you'd see all of these different characters have got a motion path or motion file clip uh, in their timeline here. So that is my run through of the motion pilot tool. It's not really as complicated as it looks. It's just very powerful and there's a lot you can do to set up what is um, essentially creating automatic animations. If you've been following along, we'll give you some idea as to how to use that, the motion pilot tool and give you some sort of inspiration for how you may use it yourself. So I hope you found that demonstration useful and that it was helpful in getting you up to speed with the new motion pilot tool. I don't think it's as complex as it at first seems. There's just a lot of settings that can really make a difference to the animation that you produce. So that's it for this video. Until next time, bye for now.